Performers will kick off momentarily. Mr. Chance Hugh will do us the favor. Excuse me. Excuse me, getting closer again. It's a high kick, 10. Nine breaks through, shaking off the nerves, and we're off. This banger from the inside from Sacramento by himself and slowing the ball down. Can't leave for offsides. And we have an injury. Yep, he's up walking it off. We have our physio, Brendan Doyle, newly to Little Rock, but definitely making an impact as physio for the team. Checking him out. Looks like the game will continue. <laughs> well, Charles is very clear now that the uh, Sacramento boys want to set the tone by being more physical. They're a little bit more straight line running. And we and the Rock Stormers knew that. They're just trying to get back into the game, certainly. Definitely. We definitely have the big boys to out-muscle them there in the uh, middle. So we're going to take away some space here. It's midfield rucking, attacking the midfield. Ball really slow coming out. Some nifty running by their number nine, and it's a try. For Sacramento, and number nine, Joshua Holland. So starting fast is the Sacramento Blackhawks and the number nine who scored the try, Joshua Holland, will attempt the conversion. Charles, it looks like the Blackhawks are setting the tone early with some straight line physical play. Um, let's see what we can do here when we get this ball back. Well, it's, oh. it's nothing that we uh, weren't lost. expecting. We knew they were a uh, big physical team coming into this, and I believe we've prepared for that. They don't really have, as far as we know, of any wide ranging. We know they're going to punch it up through the middle for most of the game. Exactly. But of course, Charles, we didn't come here just to play defense. So let's see if we can't get some ball back here. Definitely. From the Rock Stormer side. Nice contestable kick. There we go. Here's the ball. Oh, a little unfortunate tiny knock off Andrew Roach. It's very close. <laughs> So, first scrummage of the day. See how the referee will be officiating the first scrummage of the day. I, I pick isolated again. If, we can, if the Stormers can tackle one on one and get a second person over the ball, we've got a shot. 
kick ahead. Fielded by my outside. Was fielded the attempt at Michael Baum. First line out of the day to the Little Rock Stormers. So Justin Nichols will be uh, play, starting at the hooker position today. An immaculate thrower, as we know. And it results in a first stormer possession. Ball through the hands, probing, attacking the outside gap is Chance U. Hands on the ball. Stormers possession off the first ruck. Try to get the get the nerves out. Advantage, Sacramento. And this tackle by Mr. Baum. And there's another score by the Blackhawks. Number 14, Mr. Robert Carter. Scores the try for the Blackhawks. Score 10-0 pending the conversion. Venture to say, Charles, that the Sacramento Black Blackhawks are doing what they want to do right now in the first 10 minutes. Um, Thankfully, this is an 80-minute game, and it's time for the Stormers to play their game. Exactly what I was thinking. It takes 90 minutes. This is uh, still the first half, and as big as these boys are, hopefully they'll tire out soon. And that's uh, part of the game plan is to let them go ahead and run. So it's a long conversion attempt. The kick is short. No good. Ten nothing. Sacramento. Striking distance for the Stormers in the first seven minutes of the first half. Certainly, Mr. Hughes kicks are uh, right on point. Uh, seems that they're going to be. Some contesting of the possession in the air here after his kicks. There's another one. That didn't go 10 that time. Early, early call. Scrum center, second scrum of the game today. I'm betting that uh, they're going to be rambling with their fours. What do you think, Charles? I think that's a uh, very good option. More than likely, they're going to do an eight-man pick, uh, same as last time. Whole lot of beef in that pack. They're not driving, though. Neither scrum is really driving. Um, there's another... Nice one-on-one -on -one tackle by Mr. Blake Blaylock. Going to make these one-on-one -on -one tackles. Try to get slow that ball down. From the Sacramento, which has had their way so far in the first 10 minutes. There's a drop ball. That should be a contestable ball. Just a slow, methodical driving game. Plan for the Sacramento Blackhawks. Game of inches, game plan. Not, uh, not, uh, you hands in the ruck. Call. Not back 10, but the referee doesn't pick it up. 
We're over the ball. So that should be a penalty, but it's not called. Number 14 back in for a try with un unnumbered Blackhawk. Charles, I'd like to see the Stormers with some ball here, um, see if we can't contest. We need to look for areas of the game where we can actually have a chance of getting the ball. We, uh, we're we tackling uh, two men uh, for one attacker, and uh, that's giving them an automatic overload everywhere. Uh, so if we can get some one-on-one -on -one tackles on the, junior, on the Stormer side um, and get that second man uh, slowing the ball down, we might have a shot. Well, we need possession of the ball on the Stormer side. Definitely. I think uh, part of the problem may be the uh, size intimidation. We'll see. We'll see. It's an early game. It's 10 minutes in. It's 15 nothing, and three conversions missed so far. Right. One score in, and you've got a ball game again. So let's be patient. We'll be patient as announcers uh, that this game will even up. We've seen what the Stormers can do in the uh, past, and this isn't anything that they can't come back from. As we said, it's a 90-minute game. Looks like Chance U is down with an injury. Um, attacking the middle once again with offloads. Uh, very effective, uh, playing an effectively effective vertical game um, to try to bring in our team and then spin it wide. That's there's a knock on. It should be an attack situation for the Stormers now. Counter attack, uh, kick the ball away. Uh, see if we can get some territory here. There we go. And a Blake Blaylock. Almost one on one with them. Ceiling, oh, coming in from the side is the call. The Blackhawks. <laughs> Matt Guest selects to kick for touch for a line out. Excellent kick about seven meters out from the try zone, which, by the way, are very short. They're about five meters short. Take this time now to thank our sponsors, uh, Golden Eagle Distributors, Dugan's Pub, Diamond Bear Brewing, U.S. Pizza, and Flyaway Brewing. We love those companies. They support us locally in Little Rock, Arkansas. Territory the Stormers had this game. Um, this is a dangerous area for the Little Rock Stormers. Line out, second line out, easily won. We'll see if we can't pick some guys up. There's Rowdy Parkins, uh, DC Oliver through. It's a nice long pass using the whole field with the Stormers. Unlucky knock on on the goal line. Uh, still, the territory is in the Stormers' favor. Hey, Julie. Things are looking up for the Stormers. Let's see what the big guys, Danny and Silky, have in mind here. Uh, it's a nice eight pick. Got to get that man on the ground. They have some very strong low runners. Um, and this little nine is a very slippery. Oh, but D.C. Oliver 
turns a missed pass into an easy try. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what the Stormers can do to you very quickly. And that is one of DC Oliver's main tactics. He is well known for having scored three tries off of three picks in other games. And just that quick, ladies and gentlemen, that should give the Stormers a little bit more confidence going forward. Should be an easy conversion. Uh, uh, Blake Blaylock makes these on a regular basis. Uh, Blake Blaylock, he has a rich history, a short but rich history, uh, going with Little Rock Stormers and also with ARPTC. He is an excellent uh, seventh player along with playing 15s. I believe he's also a product of uh, UCA. And just like that, the Stormers are back in the game, 15-7. For those new rugby uh, enthusiasts, uh, that's what makes this game so exciting and compelling. And once again, we'd like to thank our sponsors. Golden Eagle Distributing, Dugan's Pub, Diamond Bear Brewing, U.S. Pizza and Flyway Brewing. Thank you very much. Joshua Holland with a kick. Midfield. And it's up and not 10. So what will the Stormers do? They'll elect for a scrum, scrum midfield. Justin, this is your ball. Seems like the momentum's changing a little bit, Charles. Just a little bit. It looks like the 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 uh, the uh, players' heads are a little bit higher, and they see they're in this game now. What do you think? I think that is very true. I don't <laughs> think uh, we were on our back heels. I think we just got punched in the face That's a few right. times and had to reassess our situation. Well, we woke up in Tucson. Little Rock Stormers woke up in Tucson, Arizona today. Uh, the dry heat takes a little bit of. Uh, getting used to. That's a nice offload by Mr. Noble. And we're off to the right. Little Rock Stormers are off to the races. And a little bit of support with DC. Oliver is a score held up. A score held up. Five meter scrum. Still, the attacking, uh, the wide attack through uh, the hands to the Stormers really set up the middle. Could have used one extra support player in the middle uh, there. But again, here we are with the Sacramento Blackhawks up against it, their own five meter with the ball in hand. And that just goes to show you uh, how confident Little Rock is in the way they play rugby. They are definitely what we call a running rugby team. Not too much on the kicking, but we will run at you. And the eight pick, of course. It's down to the ground. It's a short little game. They're going to skip out to the wing, see if they can't get some some space. And uh, it's a kick away. Looks like we have some, uh, Little Rock has support. Maddie Guest fields it. Little under. Unfortunate knock on off the base. Sacramento turns the ball over. Recycled quickly. Then they've slow, chosen to slow the ball down again to allow the defense to set up. I don't think there's any question about what their game plan is, Charles. I'm not sure how adaptable it really is. Uh, so we just have to, uh, the Stormers just have to stay patient. Yeah, I believe they're kind of like the Green Bay Packers of the old gridiron. They have several plays which they practice to perfection, but it seems like those are the only plays that they have. But they do run them well. See a lot of hands on hips out here in this uh, 90 degree weather, Charles. Uh, 18 minutes in. Uh, Both sides. Uh, just it's, it's a dry heat, but I still wouldn't want to set my, put my head in a convection oven. No. Um, so here's the first scrum for the Stormers. Middle, little Matty Guest putting his the ball in. Uh, see if we can't uh, claim possession here. It's one easily. One easily. And they've got his hands in. Back 
Uh, one thing for the novices in rugby that you have to remember is while the ball is in the scrum, you're not allowed to touch it with your hands. You can only play it with your feet. Unless you're the scrum half. Unless you're the scrum half. So if the ball is going cattywampus in there, you have to use your feet to try to keep the ball in. So the ball's out and, the, and we're coming up. Should be a... We see Sacramento continuing to bang and offload and bang and offload as their style of play tries to go through the middle. Still very effective for the Sacramento. Picking and going, slowing the game down. Trying to tire out our def uh, Little Rock Stormers defense. Another offsides call. We're not back 10. The uh, referee has assessed that Little Rock Stormers are not back 10 on the last penalty. And a discussion. And a yellow card. Likely not retreating back 10. Someone has to go to the bin for it. <laughs> the slow punch in the middle. Game's very slow. Game of inches for the Sacramento Blackhawks. It's a sea of black and red. Some red hitting behind the game line and held up for the Stormers. It's two tries held up on both ends for both teams. Stormers and man down. Michu Gorgon in the bin for nine more minutes. Coach Hogate uh, he's tightening up his defense here around the goal line since he knows exactly where they're going to try to attack Charles. Which is right down the middle with their number eight. And a score for the Sacramento Blackhawks. Number eight, one of the linchpins of their attack, Tokimana Kefu. Seems like this is just a game of possession, Charles. Uh, definitely. The Blackhawks keep the ball slowly around the middle. Game of inches. And the Stormers, when they have it, they're moving the ball quickly. Um, time of possession is going to be key here, I think. Definitely. It seems uh, definitely two contrasting styles here. And it seems kind of funny that the... Uh, um, mainly Islander-centered team seems to be playing a Northern Hemisphere type of rugby, and uh, Little Rock Stormers from good old Arkansas, USA, are playing a Southern Hemisphere type of rugby. Charles, you're you, you're most certainly well traveled based on your comments. <laughs> I read a little. <laughs> the conversion is up, and it is good. First conversion of the day. And we'd like to take this time once again to thank our sponsors, Golden Eagle Distributing, Dugan's Pub, Diamond Bear Brewing, U.S. Pizza, and Flyway Brewing. For those of you just checked in, uh, the Sacramento Blackhawks are ahead in this game, 22-7, uh, 23 minutes into the first half. Like Blake Blaylock has taken over the kicking duties. Um, Chance Hugh looked like he got a leg injury earlier. I'm not sure exactly uh, if the injury reported in yet. And quick ball is out with one man attacking. And the ball was stripped away from Ronnie Parkinson, who scores an easy try. Easy try down the middle. What an opportunist that little Ronnie Parkinson is. Oh, definitely. 
Uh, Ronnie Parkinson and Wynn Noble at one time did have a going contest on the tries. Both of them uh, outdoing each other in different games and scoring tries and getting man of the match. Let's hope that that uh, rivalry in team has started up again and we can see tries from both of them today. Well, it looks like the Stormers have finally figured out that the uh, Blackhawks are running alone uh, and not taking care of the ball in contact. So uh, maybe we'll see some defensive tactic, adju uh, uh, de defensive technique adjustments uh, now. Certainly, uh, that ball was exposed, and Ronnie Parkinson just took it right out of the, uh, the attacker's hands. Definitely. Uh, Little Rock also needs to uh, launch a little bit quicker and get them behind the gain line. The uh, Sacramento team has been running the conversion from, is good. Sacramento has been running from depth with great effect, but uh, that could be nullified slightly if Little Rock would meet them behind the game line. And just like that, uh, it's 22 to 14. That's how quickly this, uh, the, the Little Rock Stormers can turn things around. Um, and if you notice, Little Rock is uh, definitely calm. They're not uh, jumping on each other, and they're just waiting to play their game. We don't have word on Chance Hugh, but we don't see him on the field currently. He may have had a leg injury. Um, we're not sure if the substitution is permanent or whether it's blood, etc. And the kick, Mr. Holland, is up, and it's 10 this time. And, str and in and out. Or no, it's uh, the touch judge uh, missed the call, and now it's straight out. Scrum center to the Little Rock Stormers. Definitely. Our guys, even though they're uh, usually smaller than the other teams, definitely like to uh, set the tone in the scrum. They almost always choose a scrum when possible. So the first put in, third put in of the day, Mr. Matt Guest, Mr. Wynn Noble at the back. See so if we can't get this out cleanly. Let's see what the what the tack plan is. There it is. It's out. Wynn Noble's a rambling, rambling move. Offload again. Back to Matty Guest. DC Oliver on a switch and finding space. He's probing for space. It's a knock on. Intentional knock, ah, not release before the knock. Penalty to Stormers. It's like they're going to choose to play the territorial game here rather than the quick tap game in this position. Blake Blaylock usually takes the, uh, the territorial kicks and he has not disappointed Line out Stormers within the Blackhawk 22. Uh, just a quick look around. We are in uh, beautiful Tucson out here in the southwest desert. The uh, field is lined by the mountains all around us. It's a beautiful facility. And back to the game. Justin Nichols with the throw. It's straight, uh, but lost at the back of the line out. And the counterattack, of course, in the middle with a nice slow ruck. And an, the first, no advantage to Sacramento. So, I think the sin bin is time to come back in, perhaps. Uh, or. Looks like you know, it's a water break, Charles. We've got a water break down here in Tucson, Arizona. Well, you know, safety of the players is paramount. Uh, Matthew Gorgon, our uh, resident uh, foreign player, a product of France, and uh, he's here working for Falcon Jet, which originally gave us a lot of our French players a few years back. And... Uh, we usually have at least one French prayer ever since then for about the last four to five years, at least on this team. Looks like he's out of the sin bin now. Uh, now we get real full strong. It's interesting. We did score 14 on 15. Uh, that should build confidence, Charles. Definitely. 
Uh, the guys have also uh, practiced in the heat over the last week and a half. Uh, we definitely changed our uh, practices and conditioning to take uh, advantage of the heat in Arkansas at this time of year. Okay, looks like time's back on now. If you're uh, joining us just now, the score is uh, Sacramento Blackhawks 22 and Little Rock Stormers 14. A pick off the base and a kick game. Fielded easily by Mr. Michael Baum in space with a two on two, uh, winning that easily. Maddie Guest slowing the game down, and we've got a banger off the bottom with Mr. Uh, Bud Dunn, one of our bearded, bearded men. Um, and that's the first uh, middle attack we've seen out of the Stormers. Clean ball off the ground to Michael Baum, who is uh, wrestled to the ground. And a uh, quick wreck, one by uh, the, G the Stormers, and another Attack with Win Noble around the middle of the oh stiff arms to his face. Oh, oh, breaking free and looking for an offload. Sets the ball. Nice quick ruck. Oh, drop the ball. Oh, Maddie guessed. Just slippery. Just slippery. And here we are again. Uh, five meters out. Territorial change. Advantage Stormers, possession, Blackhawks. Um, for the Blackhawks not being a real good kicking team, for them having tried that last kick really says something. Even though they've gone through the middle several times to score, I think they're frustrated with not being able to do it as much as they thought they might be able to. So they're trying to kick for possession. I think we might see more of that in the upcoming game. And the scrum in for Mr. Holland, number nine. Got people releasing early. I'm not sure he's, he, uh, the referee has cocked it up. But again, Charles, your, uh, your assessment's true. The kicks are not uh, executed. Uh, and the ball is nine, looking for a quick ruck. Ball on the ground again. You know, these Stormers don't care if the ball's on the ground or not. Uh, they're looking for a wild, wild open game that doesn't intimidate them if ball goes to hand. Um, and that's, that's clear from what we've seen so far. When the ball's on the ground, the Stormers come up with it. This is a turned over ball in a mall and a deep long kick. Territorial advantage, two Blackhawks, one Stormer out of bounds. Well, that was a lucky uh, bounce for the Stormers because the Blackhawks had two chasers and uh, one fielder by Mr. Fulmer. It's unfortunate for the Stormers, but certainly fortunate for the Blackhawks. Uh, they're out of trouble for now. Yep. Uh, Mark Fulmer is also a uh, excellent sevens player along with being uh, an excellent 15s player. And line out again is under a little bit of pressure now, Mr. Nichols. So uh, we'll see what the Stormers have in mind here deep in their end behind their 22. The ball is in. We're going to attack off the base. And there's a quick ruck. Uh, not rolling away in the tackle. Quick, quick tap. The people want the ball. We want. We need people with the ball, and there's a turnover again. Not back, we're off sides. Not back 10, we've had that on both sides so far. I think they're catching on that we want to uh, spread the ball wide quickly, and uh, they have what we call shooters or snipers uh, that want to do exactly what DC did when he scored. So we've got to be careful when we transfer that ball to the end like that. So, Blake Blaylock will take the penalty kick, and it is sure. Right out, Stormers midfield. So, 
kind of looked a little confused on that last one. They don't want to run in the middle of the field and get the ball turned over, but the bout side backs look, looked like they were a little surprised that we were going to attack wide out from deep from our end. I know, and you know, uh, being, for, uh, being a stormer, that, they, that, they sh that they're not intimidated doing that. I think they're, they surprised themselves. <laughs> Uh, definitely. Uh, sometimes we do have a uh, set play that's on, and uh, they might not have been ready for it if a different play was called at that time. But uh, once again, this is rugby, and uh, we should be ready to play what's in front of us. There's a line out one. Nice change of angle by Mr. Dunn. But uh, got to get that second man there. Uh, and we did not take away the threat. Quick tap by Mr. Holland, the squeaky little scrum half. And there's a pass down on the ground. Nice taking away the threat. You know, the Blackhawks, their number twos now are getting more involved in their rucks. They're taking away our threat uh, a little bit more efficiently, not running in ones but twos. Slow pick and goes uh, deep into our territory. Got Blackhawks on the ground taking knees, starting to get a little tired. Um, uh, they're definitely sucking us in, as you can see. Looked like Matthew Gorgon, our Frenchman, got hands on the ball and looked for the opportunity when one and two were isolated. What? We needed that play, didn't we, Charles? The Rock Stormers. Definitely. I can only imagine that our fans at Dugans now are relieved. <laughs> Six minutes left in the first half, and the score is still 22 to 14 to the Blackhawks. So this game is not very fast since most of the uh, possession is to the Blackhawks, but boy doesn't the pace change when we get the ball. Stormer ball is quick. Justin Nichols with a throw. Win Noble easily taken from the top. Got Danny Bricky with a rumbling throw and catch down to the ground, up and over. Fast ball off the base. Matthew Gorjaw keeping his feet moving. Nice ball presentation, three on two. There's the 11 on the outside. There's DC Oliver splitting the defense, centering the try, and just like that, the Stormers are back in it. I believe that's what some of the old timers would call lightning in a bottle. And somebody forgot to put the cork in. That score, of course, Charles, was Mark Fulmer's support on the outside, two on two. All, all Mr. Oliver had to do was step his man because they are, they're nervous about the pace on the outside of Mr. Oliver. Uh, Mr. Fulmer, you were the decap goy on that play. Thank you very much. Definitely a great assessment of that. And uh, if you notice, they did not drift on the outside, preserving space. And Blake Blaylock once again gets gifted a, a get kick straight up. And just like that, Mr. Cromer, can you believe that it is 22 to 21? Just like that, with four minutes left in the first half. And 40 minutes left to go. Oh, man. I, am, I know the fans are excited to see this. I sense, sense blood in the water on the Stormer's side. I also don't hear as much noise coming from Sacramento at this time as we did during the beginning of the game. If the Sacramento fans are actually listening, uh, we, uh, the, the announcers here are actually wearing red. So we're trying to neutralize the game, but it's very difficult. Uh, however, we have tried to give you your kudos because your game plan uh, has punched us in the mouth and you are executing it. <laughs> Deep kick, Adam Weavers, sure hands. But again, balls to the ground. Junior st Stormers don't care about balls to the ground. But we've got to tack onto that ball. Mark Fulmer takes on two defenders, driving over the ball. It's a quick ruck. So to slow ball to a banger, Silky, big Silky, driven to the ground by Danny Bricky. Ronnie Parkinson, Win Noble. Taking 
and another banger. That's three in a row. Almost dangerous tackle. Taking the man off his feet. That wasn't seen. There's a guy shooting over the top. This should be a score also. D.C. Oliver, if he has support, we've got some. A uh, lot more red, more red than black. Tackler not releasing, I believe. Well, on that uh, it's, it's to the Stormers' advantage with a slow ball. We could, uh, the Stormers can play a slow game too. This is what we're doing. We need to uh, just pick them out, get them stuck in the middle, and let us use our hands to move this three on three here. That's a little bit of a high tackle, and we're going to get that call. And it may be a da such a dangerous tackle that he's going to get a warning or a yellow. We will see what happens. Uh, to my knowledge, if everybody can see that dangerous tackle, it should be a yellow card mandatory. That's one of the new rules IRB has uh, put in place for the safety of the players. Looks like Ronnie Parkinson's head still on. Uh, he's being evaluated by Brendan Doyle, our competent physio from Ireland. And uh, the Blackhawk got away with uh, a penalty without a card. Blake Blaylock on the kick for the territory, and it is not out. So counter attack, counter kick from the Blackhawks. What a gift. Um, <laughs> what, are we playing sevens here? Charles, uh, Mr. Cromer, don't you see the change in confidence? They've decided that they're just going to play ball with these boys, and they're just going to throw the ball all around the park. That quick throw in is a sevens oriented throw, but certainly can be a, can occur in the 15s game. Well, once the tide is turned and Little Rock can smell it in the water, we definitely try to put the foot down on the pedal. We've got a series of bangers off the edge, back and forth and back and forth and drive. And this is a slow turned in ball, which has come to ground. And there's a little kick across. Here comes Mark Fulmer. Little counterattack. Got Adam Weaver on the defense. Nice tackle by Adam Weaver. Pushing and pressing. And we've got a oh, it so looks like a knock on on the extreme stormers. Look at that pressure, Charles. Definitely. I mean, we're starting to see the boys come out of their shell on the red side. I actually think they're starting to get a little oh. pissed. What a way to end the first half, Charles. Uh, I know it was unfortunate on the red side. They sure would love to see have scored that try at the end. Um, Halftime score, Sacramento Black, Blackhawks 22, uh, Little Rock Stormers 21. And once again, we'd like to give a shout out to our sponsors, Golden Eagle Distributing, Dugan's Pub, Diamond Bear Brewery, U.S. Pizza, and Flyway Brewing. I'll tell you, one of those delicious IPAs from any of those breweries and some pizza right now sounds really good, Charles. Oh, definitely. A good pizza would do wonders for me right now. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like Mr. Hugh might be done for the day uh, after his injury. We'll try to get more information on that, too. And the kickoff is left-footed and taken easily by Adam Weaver. And there's a big counterattack to the other side with numbers, with Mr. Oliver. Some nice aggressive tackling, a, a banker, and also on the head. That should be a bend, people. That's the second high tackle uh, in a row. Uh, we've got time off for another discussion with a Blackhawk. Sometimes we wonder about these discussions. Up oh, and there, there it is. Go. Number 17, who is Sione Kahu, who just came in the game, uh, gets another 10 minutes rest. <laughs> so 15 on 14, and uh, Blake Blaylock in his steady boot will kick for territory. And it's sure. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great kick by uh, Blake Blaylock, almost uh, straight at the camera. Not that I was giving him any direction or anything, but a uh, beautiful kick. <laughs> Stormers walk to the line out with three, four, five. 
and they're matched with four in the line out because we have one Ben on the Blackhawk side. Justin Nichols throws have been straight down the middle here. Uh, Mr. Cromer, let's see if we can't content, keep it up. Look at the age in that line out. We got straight down the middle of Win Noble, flat off the top. Look, nice look inside. Here goes Blake Blayhawk stepping inside, stepping inside. Churning his legs, churning his legs, driving over, taking away the threats. Here's the ball on the base, little offside, and we've got the call. It should be a quick tap, Matty Guest, if he'll go forward. And he's got, oh, not through the mark. Or did he call the knock on? I thought he caught that. I'm not sure the referee was in the position to see that he actually caught it, even though it went forward. Unlucky, unlucky. Pushing the pace, though, Crummer. Oh, definitely. I believe the pace will be accelerated uh, during the second half. I believe uh, we might even be able to get this scrum, actually. Uh, Nate Tucker has been working with Justin Nichols on hooking and uh, teaching him some of um, his own tricks. Mr. Holland is, uh, not to be confused with Mr. Holland's opus, uh, hands in on the eight, but they didn't get called, of course, but that's a nice run. This eight and offload game for the uh, for the Blackhawks is really effective. Uh, and we're backing up, and we've got we've got not releasing the ball. It should be a stormer turnover, and it is. Oh, it's a stormer turnover. Offsides in the ruck, but the referee didn't didn't uh, catch that. And it's a Stormer advantage. We'll see what the Stormers have in mind. Will they slow the game down? I think they will. Looks like we have an injury. Mr. Nichols, uh, our hooker, is down with a cramp or something. Oh, he's up. And he's walking it off. And clearly what we're doing is we're changing our pace back and forth. We're slowing it down, then we're speeding it up. Very effective. Definitely. Uh, we've actually... The team has been together, this uh, core people of team has been together for quite a while, the last four or five years. So uh, we've gotten to know each other quite a bit better than a few years ago. And with just uh, a word in a couple of seconds, we can change the tempo of the game, give our players some rest or speed it up if we sense blood in the water. So now we've got a substitute. Looks like Mr. Nichols has a cramp or something. But it looks like Mr. Hogate is going. Coach Hogate is going to make take a chance. I think he's just going to go ahead. Mr. Nichols got a number of minutes, and uh, here comes our uh, Mr. Tucker, who uh, Nate Tucker, who is a sure hooker himself. Oh, definitely. Nate uh, has done things that uh, we didn't even know he could do. Nice and easy line out, straight off the top once again. We've got a banger with Danny Brink Bricky. Needs to go ahead and put that ball in the deck. We got another banger, it looks like. Oh, he slowed the ball down. But there's another banger. Here goes Win Noble. Oh, nice hit. Nice hit by the Blackhawk. Down to the ground quickly. And we get the we get the they get the turnover with hands on the ball. That's what happens when you tackle uh, quickly to the ground, uh, Charles. You, if you can beat the other man to the feet, you can actually uh, contest the ball. Exactly. So Mr. Holland is back. Uh, looks like he's given up the kicking duties. And uh, we'll get some guys, uh, the Stormers will get some guys underneath this kick because uh, certainly the kicks have not been that sure. Um, except for that one. That one is a sure kick. So if the Stormers just kept their feet there and kept the leg drive, we probably would have gone a little bit further. But uh, that's a, that's a uh, lesson learned quick. Definitely. Now, Sacramento haven't had many lineouts, Charles, so uh, let's see what they come up with here. Yeah, I predict that uh, Win Noble's going to get this one. Let me see if we can keep it lively. Ball's up, and it's thrown, overthrown. Quick attack to Andrew Roach, who gives a nice stiff arm. If he can just keep his feet for as long as possible, we have a quick bang, quick attack. Back to Big Silky, who takes two or three down, five, six, seven, eight paces. Now we're smelling dirt. We're smelling pay dirt. Matthew Gargaw needs some support on the offload. 
And we've got an easy two on one on the outside. If we could just move the ball back into Michael Baum. Nice stiff arm, nice hit off the Blackhawk, off the base, over the corner, and it's a Stormer try. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, the Stormers go up in this game. And I believe they show they can also be methodical. They're just not lightning in a bottle. As you can say, they uh, took their time. They worked the ball from one side of the field to the other and uh, took their time, patience, and scored it in the corner. Unbelievable. I mean, that was that was an exciting try. Uh, Beautiful team try. I mean, was that, I think that was Darren Oliver in the, in the corner. Is that correct, back in? Um, I didn't quite see, but I'll trust your eyes being better than mine. <laughs> well, you know, Charles, you don't, we, no one really knows what el how old you are, so I'm not really sure that uh, I could you can say that. Well, you know, <laughs> I was around when we switched from papyrus to uh, stone tablets. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here is Blake Blaylock as a long kick, but I've seen him make these. Oh, definitely. The wind's in his face, Charles. It's coming from uh, right to left. Let's see if he can. Ah, oh, just it just got under it. It's short. Yep. But with that, with that, we have Stormers 26, Blackhawks 22. And just like that, Charles. I don't think the Blackhawks are going to give up here, though, Charles. I mean, they need to stay to their game plan. When they stay to their game plan and try to bang things up the middle, it sucks all our defense in, and they've got a little support on the outside. They actually have some some nice fast runners on the outside. Uh, yes, they do, but you uh, they still have to keep that confidence if they're going to do it. And right now, it looks like what they've been planning on isn't working because we've clawed our way back up into the lead. And so they must be questioning their oh, wow. game plan at this time. So that was was uh, nice taking the air out of we was waiting for the ball to drop and there number 14 uh, number uh, 14 is um, Robert Carter skied up and uh, and oh nearly picked that ball off now, that is an athletic move and as you see him walking towards the camera you can tell he probably plays some sevens Betty doesn't play McCoy Sevens. <laughs> well, excuse me, I was giving all the credit to Robert Carter. It was really number seven, Andre Whaley. Andre Whaley. And another short take by Win Noble off the top. And we're attacking this middle ground with Danny Bricky and, the, and, and tying up some of their back row players so that we can get this ball out. I really like the play of Matthew Gorgon. He's sensing when he should have the ball out and when he shouldn't. Uh, and he's sensing it very well. And this is a nice quick ruck if we can keep, keep their hands off. But it looks like we weren't able to do that. And there's a turnover ball to Black. Black has the ball in there. We've got 17 on DC. We've got a big rambling number eight who now is back in the game. And the Blackhawks are trying to move the ball and try to play uh, the Stormers game, actually. They're trying to move the ball around now instead of attacking the middle. And the number four goes to deck, hits a quick, slowed up, uh, quick ball first, then slow. And uh, number 23 moves them behind, hits them behind the game line, slows their ball down. It's a slow ball, but it's on the ground, and you know who we're going, who's going to get it if the ball's on the ground, but they've called the offsides line. Summers back on the goal line. There's a pick, a go. The 17 is back in the game, and it's a try. And it's a try for the Blackhawks. Back and forth we go, Charles. So it looked like the 17, who was the uh, Siona Kahu, who has spent uh, his first 10 minutes of the game in the sin bin, came back and made, made a difference there, Charles. Well, definitely. A big man moving at pace is always going to make a difference, but uh, they'll only do that in the red zone. You can see how mismatched some of the players are. I mean, you know, they've got these big, strong, uh, low center of gravity guys running against faster, sleeker, gazelle-looking guys. and. Uh, um, I mean, it can be intimidating. Oh, definitely. I'm intimidated from here. <laughs> Nobody wants to be in front of a freight train. <laughs> so, quickly, that quickly, we're up. Uh, the Black Box, Blackhawks are up by one, pending this kick conversion. <laughs> by the little number nine, Mr. Holland, who splits the uprights. 
Yeah, that was kind of questionable. It took them a little while to raise those flags, but uh, looks like their kicking may be helping us. Seeing as how they missed those uh, first couple of kicks. So if you're just joining us, we're 10 minutes into the second half. The Blackhawks have just taken the lead 29 to 26 over the Little Rock Stormers. And we'd like to once again thank our sponsors, Dugan's Pub, Golden Eagle Distributing, Diamond Bear Brewery, U.S. Pizza, and Flyway Brewing. Big hole over here! So Blake Blakelock has uh, taken over the uh, midfield kicking duties uh, as Mr. Hugh, Chance Hugh, is out for the uh, remainder of the game with an injury. And just like a, the Sevens team, they retake the possession of the ball right at the 10. It's a blind attack with Danny Bricky right off the base with Maddie Guest going to deck. Should be hitting this ball off the banger right there. It's big Kevin Ryan. And they're trying to slow the ball down, keep the ball up in the air. Blackhawks are really good at looking for the ball, uh, not taking care of the ball in contact. You can see that they're looking for it before they go to ground. Looks like we've got some junior, we've got some uh, red bodies on the ground, and we've leapt over the rut from the side, which is an obvious late hit. Uh, we'll see what uh, the referee comes up here with. Uh, this was definitely advantage uh, Stormers, and I see destructive play on the Blackhawks side, Charles. Uh, definitely. It took uh, everything the Stormers had not to uh, dive into a real Donnybrook of fisticuffs there, but uh, they did keep their calm, which uh, shows how good the Stormers are as a team in maintaining composure and playing rugby as it was meant to be played. Well, you know, the, the Stormers have been working on their professionalism for the yep. last 10 years, and it's very, very clear that this is part of the game. And here is the yellow card again. That's the second yellow card that the Blackhawks have enjoyed in the second half. Destructive play results in cards, Charles. Definitely. In this game, we can set, we can take away threats, but they have to be legal threats, Charles. Right. And just like that, the Stormers are down in the Blackhawk territory. You know, uh, scoring from uh, the five meter is di more difficult uh, in 15 since we have uh, 15 on 14 running line down here on the defensive side. So we'll see if they can run some angles down here and get the ball into the dry zone. Right, I can see a couple of punches and then uh, trying to move it out wide very quickly. Let's win the line out first, shall we, Charles? So the ball in with Nate Tucker. It is straight. It's collapsing of the mall. Not straight. Uh, late call, not straight. Uh, advantage, Blackhawk. Uh, the Blackhawks do have a tactic where it might not quite be collapsing the mall, but. Uh, their line out, one guy in their line out will definitely watch and see when the jumper's feet hit the ground and immediately yank that one player to the ground. Exactly. So the Blackhawks feed five meters to the right of the pitch here uh, from your camera lane, uh, right to left. It's a quick hook and ball in. There's the 17 back in. Big hit off the wing. Should be a turnover here. Uh, too many people trying to tackle that big man, Charles. And it's an offload to the ground. And uh, actually, the Blackhawks are, are holding the tacklers. Uh, so maybe the referee will see that. Um, the Red Stormers have come up with the ball. They've isolated the ball carriers again. And Batty Guest has a slow ball off the bottom. They're okay, nice head. Nice hit behind the gain line by the Blackhawks. Blackhawks need to roll away. And now we're just going to pick and chase across the top. There goes DC Oliver with a little chip cut across, and it's a score for the, for the Little Rock Stormers. Maddie Guest and DC Oliver hook up again. I've actually been waiting for that. Even though Little Rock is a running rugby team, at uh, some times when we notice that there's nobody home in the uh, fullback position, we will do that little chip over the top. So far, I believe it has worked in the last three games uh, by the same combination. I mean, exciting. Now, Matt Guest and uh, D.C. Oliver, of course, product from Arkansas State University, both played for that for that club. 
feeder club for the Little Rock Stormers here in Arkansas. Very proud of the Arkansas State men who uh, made it to the uh, D1 National Championship, lost to Cal in the final. Uh, nonetheless, very proud of that, that, uh, that college program. Here's Bla Blaylock with an easy kick, and it's through the front of the goal. And in some games, kicking can make all the difference. And so far, we've been true. We've missed, uh, Stormers have missed one conversion um, today. Scoring update, uh, for 14 minutes into the second half, Stormers 33 and Sacramento Blackhawks 29. Looks like D.C. Oliver's getting uh, some mending to down here from our, our competent physio. Uh, a little calf action, a little flush out. Looks like he's probably going to make it be okay. So far, it's been back and forth. The team that uh, gets two tries in a row will get the momentum. Let's we'll see what happens. Here's a left-sided kick deep. And we've got to catch that ball in the air. Uh, looks like we're going to attack from deep in our end. There's Mike, Michael Bommy. Score to Ronnie, Ronnie Parkinson. He's going to attack. Move the ball off to Roach. And there's a forward pass. Got to catch the ball on the kickoff, uh, nominate uh, that, and, and that drop, ball drop really hurt uh, the Stormers there. Uh, put us put us under pressure. We weren't calculating uh, weren't calculating ahead of time. And there's a substitute. Looks like a uh, newer player on the Stormers, Mr. Tripp Crossweight, is uh, coming onto the field. Uh, looks like he's uh, going to wing. Might be uh, replacing DC Oliver. Come on, Little Rock, yeah, steal this thing. Blackhawk scrum, five meters out. I'm betting the eight picks it. What do you think, Charles? Uh, I believe that's a definite oh, possibility. Eight, eight pick. Ball to the ground. Nice tackle at the chop. Got a little chop tackle there by Andrew Roach. Brought him to the ground. Slowed the ball down. It's pick and go, and it's another try. Another try, Blackhawks. So it looks like this is a definitely a territorial game. Um, the only way the Blackhawks actually score is when the uh, the Stormers commit errors. Um, so if the Stormers can uh, clean up the game, take it a little easier when they're back there. Um, then uh, the Blackhawks won't have a ball. Uh, definitely. We uh, definitely need to maintain possession. Um, if you can't hear that, the uh, Blackhawks bench is telling them to suck it up. So apparently <laughs> they are quite winded at this time. I'm thinking if we can play the side-to-side -side game a little bit better, even if we don't score, we can uh, run them some more. And the Justin Holland here, uh, number nine, has been taking most of the conversions today. This is a right foot, right to left, straight. Uh, looks like it would just slight wide right. No conversion. And once again, we thank Mr. Holland for his kicking. <laughs> as well as... <laughs> as well as our sponsors... Golden Eagle Brewing... Uh, Golden Eagle Distributing, I'm sorry. Dugan's Pub, U.S. Pizza, Flyway Brewing, and Diamond Bear Brewery. That's right. I believe Diamond Bear Brewery also has a nice menu along with Dugan's Pub. They are great places to eat at during uh, lunchtime or even dinner. As, as well as Diamond Bear. Uh, Flyway has food too. I mean, all of them. I mean, you can eat, you can drink, you can be merry and watch sports. Exactly. Lots to do in Little Rock, Arkansas. The kick's up and it's Blake Blaylock and it looks like we're trying to get under it. It's a knock on by Black, played by uh, Red and the referee will allow it. Here's a slow ball from the bottom and we'll see if we can move the ball. Uh, looks like they're three on three here with a little kick ahead by Blake Blaylock. And we've got, uh, got to make that tackle in the out-of-bound line. And Blake Blaylock makes his tackle. If his dad is watching, he should be a proud father today. 
A little bit of a nice intention, but wrong tactic at that time. They're trying some new little tactics. This is actually works out in their advantage. The uh, the territorial game is working for Little Rock. We just need to keep the ball in hand and uh, take the take the business seriously right now. Win the line out, then play. So Nick Tucker be doing the throwing. Got Win Noble. That's fastball off the top. We've got two bangers. Matt goes on behind the back to Mark Fulmer. We've got a slow ruck forming with a counter. Bangers off there. We've got big Justin Arnus taking it back. We need to move that line. The defense needs to move, needs to move backward when we take these bangers. Right now, they're winning the area of contact. We need to get some territory when we take those bangers. Otherwise, they're launching. We've got three on three. We're not. There's Blake Blayock with a high tackle. He came off. Here's Maddie Guest uh, tackled from an a position he wasn't sure of, and little nine has picked up the ball and scored on the turnover. Mark Fulmer is talking to the ref saying that he knocked the ball on. This touch judge was not in position actually to help the referee, and there's no TV here. So they're going to talk about it, and it looks like they've awarded the try. Uh, the dust is settled, and I think the try is awarded. Starting to get a little testy out there, as it will with the uh, lead changes as it has been going. Definitely a hot, contested, hard-fought game. So the score now is 41 to 33, pending this conversion. So two quick sto scores by the Blackhawks, um, with uh, some players missing on the Stormers. We've got uh, Chance Hugh out with an undisclosed leg injury. DC Oliver out with an undisclosed leg injury. Um, so apparently there's some adjustments that are being made now with uh, new people in new positions. And the kick is good. And it looks like uh, the Blackhawks are starting to get a little bit of confidence back. That's correct. Uh, Blackhawks up by 10, 43-33. But as we know, Charles, with 20 minutes left, uh, and how fast with how fast this, the Stormers can score, one score puts them right back in it. Definitely. Got to keep the composure. Got to play the game. I think. Uh, Our, uh, the Stormers' bangers just aren't very effective. They're really not moving the defense back. So when they win three bangers and they and the defense hasn't moved, they're moving the ball out to the edge and they're not overloaded. There's no overload there. So uh, staying a little bit more patient with the midfield attack is probably not a bad idea. We've got an obstruction call uh, on black, which is uh, fortunate for the Stormers. So we had a blocker in for the catch. Uh, and the Blackhawks, of course, are uh, disagreeing with that call. So Blake Blaylock here for the kick for touch for the territory, and he's done that, that job admirably today. You know, that line out right there around the 22 probably benefits the Stormers, you know, the closer the line out, the more the defense is up in the, in the, uh, uh, in the line. And these try zones are only five meters deep. So uh, this actually is a, a more beneficial territory around the 22 in this field, Charles. Definitely. So. It's a line with Win Noble off the top once again. And we're going to move it through the hands here. Looks like Blake Blaylock is going to take that step. He's back. He's putting the ball back like he should. And Mighty Gus should be serving that tee as quickly as possible. The bangers are a little slow. Here comes Big Silky with a 13 on his back. Not to, to be denied. Now that's a more effective banger. Now we have a Blackhawk on the ground. Big Adam Weaver rumbling down. 
through the 17 straight over. Now we've got ball off the base. Now it should be an easy, easy, easy score to the outside. But we've slowed the ball down. We'll see if they'll pick and go. It looks like they're going to try to do that. Roddy Parkinson with the ball. We've got a switch. We've got Red Noble. Win Noble with oh, gar gar. Nice tackle by the Blackhawks behind the gate line. But Win Noble is there to retrieve the ball, keep possession of the ball. We're going backwards. The tackling fool actually fell to the ground. And here goes Blake Blaylock through with an offload. Offload into the tri and almost two meters out. Here goes Maddie Guest on the ground, on the head, should be a penalty, but the referee's on the wrong side of the rut. Slowed the ball down. Win Noble is commanding the ruck. He's got his hands on the ball, and we're picking on oh, We got Big Adam Weaver hit behind the game line. I think the referee uh, needs to officiate the offsides line. We got a three on two on the other side. We keep running straight into Blackhawks. Blackhawks are all on the ground. We've got two Blackhawks on the ground. We've got red people on their feet. We've got Trip almost there with the ball likely turned over, but nope, looks like we, we maintained possession. We just starting it. And that is a try. Charles, this is the I saw some real men out there. They decided they were going to attack the Blackhawks in the gut. And look at them. Look how many Blackhawks there are on the ground now. Definitely. I mean, there are a number of Blackhawks on the ground. They've decided that the outside's not open, and they just, they must have hurt us, Charles. The bangers were much more effective on that drive. We decided to take it to them in their house, which is running straight, running hard, and we proved to them that we can keep up with them. Looks like we've got an injury on the ground. Not really sure who it is. Um, but with that score, the uh, Little Rock comes back to 43-38, pending this conversion. Blake Blaylock, of course, is uh, sure-footed here. Uh, he's a right-footed kicker, so this should be a fairly easy conversion. And he let the club do the work, so that, with that score and competent conversion kicking, we have Sacramento Blackhawks 43. Little Rock Stormers, 40. Oops. I know if you're a Stormer fan, uh, you're on the edge of your seat with 14 minutes left in the second half. Uh, you can see that the substitutes for the Stormers, for Mr. Hugh uh, Mr. Oliver, are capable. I mean, Tripp Crossway almost got that last try, and he won, we won the ball, even though he was isolated. Uh, that, that, that shows the, the, the impeccable professional level of coaching there in Little Rock, Arkansas. Oh, definitely. Not to mention that uh, we get a lot of our players. Tripp is definitely a uh, player with a star that's rising. He is, comes to us from actually competitive college swimming. And and uh, he's in his first or second year playing with us, and he's definitely made an impact in every game he's played in. He's uh, made a try in, I believe, the last three or four games that he's played in. It looks like we've got a Black Hawk down, if you know the movie. Uh, down over here on the pitch, he looks pretty injured. Uh, in fact, uh, he's got uh, people carrying him off. Um, we hope uh, that he's okay. Uh, this is one of the big men. I'm, I can't see the number. Uh, the one with uh, the long hair. Uh, he's he's hurting. Uh, probably due to heat fatigue. As you can see, uh, our physio, Brendan Doyle, has uh, also been called in to uh, assess the player. So, with 12 minutes left in regulation, at least by our clock, uh, the Blackhawks are up only 43 to 40 over the Stormers. This has been a back and forth game um, ever since the 15th minute uh, when the Stormers allowed three quick tries by the Blackhawks, but now it's settled down to a very, very competitive match and entertaining. Definitely. Almost uh, a counterattack. So, so we've 
we've got the capable Mr. Holland uh, taking the uh, deep kick, and we'll see if we can't call that in the air this time. Boy, there's a little Matty Guest. Isn't he steady under pressure? Here's Ronnie Parkers to say he's going to probe the middle. Uh, he's been passing enough. He's had enough of this. Um, but it looks like he mu must have dropped the ball off his hand. Yep. Um, unfortunate. Unlucky. He's keep his head in the game. He'll be all right. I like to see Ronnie Ronnie run some now, uh, Mr. Parkinson. I usually badger him about not passing, but uh, uh, that middle's opening up for the first two backs, and because uh, the the defense on the on the Blackhawk side is actually flooding the outside. Yes, I believe the Blackhawks have also changed their tactics. They're coming up quicker on us on defense. And oh, look uh, at there. There is, looks like a feeding call on the Blackhawks, and Maddie Guest appropriately called it for the referee, and the referee listened to it. A lot of our guys are very knowledgeable. It's just in the way we communicate with the referee sometimes, but uh, we've learned how to do that better. The Stormers are the smartest people they know. I believe that's a quote from uh, something that Dan Jones or Roy Dog would probably say. And a quick uh, clearing kick from uh, Blake Blaylock to get uh, more more space. Now, you've got a very dangerous line out midfield, as you remember in rugby. Midfield is the, the hardest pl uh, position in the field to defend. There's a lot more space laterally, a lot more space behind. Um, and we'll see if the Stormers can take advantage of it. So the Stormers' uh, competent line-out thrower, Mr. Nate Tucker, uh, and line-out caller, Mr. Wynn Noble, are um, have fallen down just a little bit. But we've got a knock-on with the Blackhawks. They they were a little surprised they won that line-out. Uh, they were flat off transition and subsequently knocked the ball off. Yes. So it looks like we need to call the fans in on the last 10 minutes of this thing. I'm not sure the fans in, that travel all the way here from Arkansas have been that rowdy. So it looks like there's about nine minutes left and the fans are are starting to get properly engaged. We've got a red scrum here with Matt Guest in and everybody's hands out. The ball is out and a, a, a big eight pick, big tackle from behind the line with the number nine on Win Noble. Fastball off the bottom, we got Ronnie Parkinson attacking off the base and we've got some miscue in the middle. Ronnie is isolated, but he's thrown the ball back like in sevens. And we've got a three on two on the outside if we can run some angles. And a competent Ma Michael Baum is out in space. Came in a little high, so right into some uh, waiting Blackhawk hands. But we've got a banger with big Justin Ernest placing the ball back. And Blackhawk's in the way with a picking no. Ronnie did not see the number nine sitting in the lane, uh, and the ball's turned over. Blackhawk ball in transition. As the offload of the big 17, got to make this tackle from behind the line before he pops it off. There's the nine, is on the ground. Should be a turnover here with more red than black, but we didn't get the turnover. So three on two, got a step with the nine. And Matty Guest is in the house and it looks like we can't make the tackles. Stormers are having tackling problems all season one-on-one. -on -one. That's uh, a disappointing defensive lapse by the Stormers. You know, Charles, I thought that uh, with one, uh, that uh, we had numbers in defense back there. Uh, and I think people were a little confused as to their role in the turnover. So with seven minutes left, uh, the Blackhawks uh, sc scored again. And it looks like they're in kicking range. So the score now, 48-40 pending the conversion. The Blackhawks are definitely wearing themselves out in an effort to win this game. They're putting everything in. Several of their players are crouched over, sucking wind, drinking copious amounts of water. And requiring uh, the Stormer physio to help them out. Definitely. So the uh, 
non-labeled player will take the kick. I think the... Um, I believe uh, Jonathan... Perhaps Stone. the number nine is the one that is down. And the reason that's why he's not taking the kick, but we'll have to see. And he's lined it up and he's pushed it wide maybe. I think it's wide. Yes, it's pushed wide. The score remains 48-40. Blackhawks with six minutes on a, on a non-official time left in the second half. I believe it uh, looks like the kicker shanked that a little bit to the right. And speaking of shank, don't forget our upcoming four-man golf scramble. <laughs> Ask any That's rugby August, player. Right? I believe it is. And all you duffers and uh, other non-golf uh, playing people out there who would like to have a fun time and help out Little Rock Rugby, please contact your local rugger and find out more information. Once again, that's a rugby four-man scramble golf tournament coming up in August of this year. Blake Blaylock is winding up for the kick. Boy, do, it, boy do the Stormers need the ball, Charles. That's a short kick, which is fielded by the Blackhawk easily. Three-man rook, um, ball off the base to a big man. Nice hit behind the line. Uh, slows the ball down just a little bit. Slow ball still. Looks like they're protecting their league. And then by end, Mr. Blaylock is offside, so the hand is up. And there's no, there's no, there was advantage on the kick ahead, but the call was early. The early call, the referee looks like he should be wearing red. It's like the backs were just a little off sides on that last rock, trying to anticipate. Uh, yeah, I'm a little biased. I'm gonna just say that uh, a lot of our guys having played sevens are quicker off the mark than the referee would like to believe. That's a, that's a fantastic tackle by Mr. Tom High, who's now entered the game. And here We'll see if Adam Weaver can dunk, and he's in the score. Big man Adam Weaver has taken advantage. That man has not dropped one ball all day. I know that Adam Weaver told me personally that he hates to lose. That is a definite. Very competitive. Uh, I believe he played rugby at a young age and then did... Uh, single sport, so to speak, wrestling and other sports, but he did come back to rugby as a team sport. Here's a center kick by Blake Blaylock. Uh, this would bring it to within one point game, Charles, with about four to five minutes left in regulation, pending injury time. An easy club doing the work straight away. Brings the Stormers back within one point, 48-47. And that's what a kicker can do for you folks. Charles, I'm, I'm hoping that every Stormer on the field and off the field now is telling themselves the one word, and that word is possession. So, it, it's coming down to the last minutes. Every man on the field is pulling out everything he has. Neither side wants to lose. Some patience with the ball in the air. Some patience here with an easy catch and pass. There's Matt Guest. Why Matt Guest is calling the ball in the air with against those big forwards, I don't know. But sure, he is a man against men. And it is his birthday. Happy birthday, Matt Guest. Well, Matt it's a quick banger. Another little banger. They're starting to get some patience in their game. They know they have to keep the ball, build the patience, and be the last team to score. So we're actually having some effective bangers here on the Stormers' red side. Uh, we're running out of players if we can just stay patient with this. This is uh, some very effective, and that is an offsides call. That should be a team That's, foul and that, a yellow card. Uh, that, uh, we'll see if he's near his pocket, Charles. He's not near his pocket, but boy, was he uh, offsides a mile. That really was a destructive play because uh, Red Stormers were really uh, having their way. That was extremely destructive. That probably should have been a card. Yes. 
I believe it should have been a card. It's the, at least the second time, probably the third or fourth, that, that, that they yeah. have actually done that well, play. Well, they, it's a professional foul. There's three minutes left. We are having their way. They're getting overloaded, and he pulls. A, he slows the ball, the game down by, get, by granting penalties. So. Definitely. Uh, so hopefully the Stormers are uh, on their game. Mellow Matty Guest won't have that. They need to just go ahead and quick tap those next, uh, those next flagrant uh, uh, decisions. I believe that would be a tactic that Sir Richie might do also. So we've got a line out here that, that has to be won by the uh, uh, Little Rock Stormers. You really can't hope, I'm glad they can't hear me commentating because I know that puts pressure on them. Uh, but it was a missed throw, miss, miss catch. We've got a tackle behind the game line and an isolated player. Uh, we'll see if we can't counter up that. Uh, looks like they've kept the possession of the ball with a slow ball off the base. Um, we're going to pick and charge here and keep this lead. Uh, and uh, the Stormers should know that that's the tactic. They're going to pick and drive and pick and drive. And they've got to get their hands on the ball from an onside position. Black is just fine to pick and drive off the base and try to eat up this clock. Uh, this is what we're seeing. This is the sixth pick and go in a row. Uh, they've got almost the whole team in the pick and go. Uh, the Red Stormers need to go ahead and bring some people in, keep it one on one on the outside. Uh, and there's just a pick and go all the way down, looking for isolated man. The white, the red team is looking for options for isolation. Black uh, and it looks like for we might have turned the ball over, to Mr. Cromer, but it was not to be had. They are just slowing this game. They are playing the game within the game here, Cromer. They are playing the game within the game. If Little Rock can get their hands on the ball, nobody is really at home for a kick and chase, a long kick this and chase. This should be a counter ruck here. should be our uh, the Stormers ball. Nope. And that's something that we did not want to see that's not is a, a penalty. penalty. Uh, is it a penalty? I believe he didn't put his hand, hand up out. as a penalty. He didn't hand it as a penalty. He put a scrum to the Blackhawks. All right. I believe the Blackhawks were also intentionally slowing down the game. Of course they were. As you can see, a couple of players uh, kneeling on the ground. If you're watching, uh, we're at the end of regulation, into injury time, Blackhawk possession, Stormers down by one point. And if the Stormers can get their hand on the ball and at least get into field goal range, then uh, Blake Blaylock will definitely uh, prove his money's worth. Well, we know the 17 is going to pick this ball up, so we need that. The Stormers need that flanker on that side to make that big, big hit. Oh, he went left. He went left against Matt Guest and Tom High, which is a little bit of an unusual ploy, but they, they, they took it. There's an isolated player on the ground there by uh, Black if uh, Red will take advantage. And no, Black is just methodically drilling, drilling the ball down. We're not sure exactly um, whether how much time is left, but this is uh, a destructive play on uh, coming through the ruck with the Stormers losing their patience. And this, this actually plays right into the Blackhawks' uh, hands. Uh, yes, three, it does. Three, four, five Blackhawks on the floor, and they're going for post. They are truly spent. I uh, can guarantee you the next team tomorrow will be thankful for us today. Uh, how long do they have to take a kick? 30 seconds. Uh, 30 seconds, Cromer. 30, 30 seconds, seconds to take the kick. After declaring um, kick. I think this is likely the last play of the game. Um, and the... Um, the knees on the ground are uh, part of the game plan for the Sacramento team. Yes. Uh, you got to hand it to them. Um, they're getting they're, they're getting what they want. So, with likely no time left, Dustin Holland, their number nine, who has been really really effective uh, and one of the keys to to the game for the Blackhawks, lines up with the post dead center, and that is the end of the game. So the final score, Blackhawks from Sacramento, 51, Little Rock Stormers from Arkansas, 47. And once again, we would like to thank everybody that tuned in.
everybody that went to Dugan's Pub, Dugan's Pub to watch the uh, streaming live here from Tucson. And we'd also like to thank all of our sponsors who made this trip possible and all of the training. We'd like to thank Dugan's Pub, Golden Eagle Distributing, Diamond Bear Brewery, U.S. Pizza, and Flyway Brewing. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll bid uh, today adieu uh, for Charles Cromer and Julie McCoy. We will tune in tomorrow when we find out who our opponent is. Definitely. And if anybody has any comments, then uh, we'd like to hear those. We are a work in progress, and we welcome all comments, good and bad. Thank you for your support.